Hello everyone and welcome to the course on simulating fluid flows using Python. In the last few lectures, we have started the discussion on one dimensional uh, steady convection diffusion equation. We have looked at it from a central differencing perspective and we saw that it was not really very nice after a certain values of picklet number and we introduced the upwind differencing scheme in the last lecture. So, please check the last lecture about the theoretical aspects as to how the scheme has been really developed and uh, specifically how it compares with the central differencing scheme uh, from a coefficient perspective of the finite volume method. In the lecture today, we are going to look at uh, the coding aspects of it because this is a course that is oriented towards the coding aspects. So, it makes absolute sense to introduce the coding aspects here and that is what we are going to do in the lecture today. And also towards the later half of this lecture, we will look at how the two scheme compares through a python code that we sort of uh, combine the existing python codes for the central differencing scheme and upwind scheme and they can be used to uh, look at a comparison look at a one on one comparison between the two schemes. So, I hope that this lecture would give you a further insight about how to uh, write your code for the upwind scheme which is actually very easy if you have already developed your code for the central differencing. But this would show you that uh, especially the versatility of the upwind scheme which I think is uh, worth knowing. So, without wasting any further time let us get started. So, what you see on the screen is the code on the left hand side in the editor, uh, the code that I have uh, modified through the central differencing scheme and now can solve for the upwind scheme. So, this particular code snippet here, this is for the central differencing scheme that I shared in the previous lecture. And what I have done is I have copied and pasted this code here as it is and there are only two changes that I have to make. The first one is that the coefficient a w is written in this form that is gamma over h plus max of rho u comma 0 which was earlier in the central differencing was gamma over h plus rho u divided by 2. So, remember that this max function was being introduced while we were talking about the upwind scheme and thanks to that, that this max function we are able to have always positive values of these coefficients as you will uh, notice later that previously in the central differencing for example, one of the coefficients would get negative if the magnitude of picklet number was larger than 2. So, that is what was creating the whole fuss over there, but in the upwind scheme thanks to this max function that always the coefficients a w a e and a p thus they are always positive. So, here these are the two changes and these were basically discussed in the last lecture that uh, we have this max function for both a w and a e. So, that is the only change I have made for the for this particular code. You might remember that for the coefficient a p I had written an extra term that is f e minus f w and because it is a case of steady one dimensional uh, convection diffusion with a constant velocity that is why we both the f e and f w are equal and I am just neglecting that for now. So, f again to remind you f is rho times u uh, evaluated at the east or the west phase. So, because that is equal so we can neglect that while writing this code. So, now let us see uh, what happens I uh, will just run this code for a slightly smaller grid size and everything else is more or less the same here. So, I have deliberately changed the velocity to a very high number so that the picklet number is slightly high. So, if I run this particular code you can see that the picklet number is 10 and for even for this very high picklet number we get a very nice solution that coincides fairly well with the exact solution. Mind you that this green line is not the exact solution you can check yourself from the slides that we uh, used for the introduction of this particular problem you will see that the exact solution or the upwind solution is quite close to the exact solution. But when you will evaluate the central differencing for these high values of picklet number that would be even closer. So, 
So we'll try to demonstrate that using a comparison between the upwind and the central differencing scheme, but for a lower value of picklet number, let us say less than two, because we know that for a high value of picklet, uh, for the high value of picklet number that is beyond two, the central differencing scheme simply wouldn't work. So that is why to have a fair comparison, we'll use a code that is basically just a result of putting these two codes uh, on top of each other. So the first part of it until here, it's for the upwind scheme as you can figure out from these coefficients and the bottom part uh, that is from somewhere after this section, this is where I'm writing the central differencing scheme. I'm just copied it, pasted that entire code. So just making sure that uh, everything is uh, uh, the same. So once I run this code and make sure that uh, or mind you that the velocity here is smaller so that the picklet number would be one as you can see over here. So what that would do is it would create two lines uh, in the results. The first line would correspond to the upwind solution would be by a green color and the second line using a red color would be for the central differencing scheme. So if I uh, maximize it you can see that uh, should probably close should have probably closed this one here first so let me run the code again because uh, there were three lines which was one of the lines was for the previous upwind only code so now you can see here that the green line which is the upwind code and the red line which is the central differencing solution you can see that it is more towards the side where it's getting closer to one Again, this is something that you might want to validate or might want to compare by putting the exact solution on the same plot. This is something I should have done, but I'm just reminding myself of it now. So please excuse me for that. But you will see that when you will put the uh, exact solution on top of these two plots, you will see that the upwind scheme is actually farther from the exact solution as compared to the central differencing. So if this is the exact solution, this is the upwind, then this would be the central differencing. And the reason is, it's very simple, that the central differencing is actually second order accurate in space, while the upwind scheme is first order accurate. So in order to have the same accuracy, you need to have a finer grid for the upwind scheme, whereas for the central differencing scheme, you can get away with a slightly coarser grid. So that's kind of trade-off. Uh, because we know that the central differencing scheme is only good for a small value of picklet number and the upwind scheme is versatile for picklet number but the upwind scheme is slightly or rather one order less accurate than the central differencing scheme. So depending on the requirement whether you want uh, a very high accurate scheme or whether you want a versatile scheme. So depending on that you can uh, decide which scheme to use. So you can also think in terms of that, uh, why can't we have sort of balance in between these two schemes? Why can't we just uh, tell the code as to if the picklet number is less than two, use this scheme. And if the picklet number is greater than two, use that scheme. And that is exactly what the idea of what is called as a hybrid scheme that we would be talking about maybe in the next lecture or two. But for now, I hope that this discussion would uh, give you an idea of how you can modify your existing central differencing solver in order to arrive at an upwind solver and more importantly the key differences from a numerical perspective between the two schemes so uh, if you like the video please hit that like button because that helps me in understanding that the content that i'm producing it's actually uh, getting through to you and not really getting over you. So that would be appreciated. And uh, if you have any questions, always please feel free to write them down in the comments or anywhere. I'm usually trying to be very active in terms of responding to all the questions that are being posted on this channel. In the meantime, please take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.